thank you for joining us this evening. Uh, I'm giving a presentation this evening on mindfulness as a treatment for psychiatric disorders. Uh, and this presentation uh, will be evidence-based and based on research that is, has been published. Uh, so what we want to do is to uh, basically show you the evidence that mindfulness is a credible alternative or complement to uh, as a treatment for uh, psychiatric illness uh, to complement the traditional Western style uh, treatments for psychiatric disorders. So uh, mindfulness meditation has increasingly been used to complement psychiatric treatment, uh, but uh, while it is very uh, contemporary and very fashionable uh, at this time to use mindfulness as a, a form of uh, practice, either when you have a mental illness or you don't have a mental illness or just for personal well-being. But what we really want to explore is what is the evidence for its usefulness and why is it that it works? Uh, and what is uh, very useful today is that in the last 15 years, uh, a body of research has actually emerged uh, on the use of mindfulness in psychiatric illness. And we can confidently recommend uh, this meditation access, uh, practices as a complement to our traditional psychiatric treatment now, because we have this body of research that supports its actual use uh, as part of therapy. So the, while we say that the mindfulness can help a range of psychiatric illness, uh, we need to be very specific uh, because it doesn't treat all forms of psychiatric illness. And we, we want to be able to tell, uh, define where psychiatric illness can be helped by mindfulness practice. One of the most uh, evidence-based and most credible uh, support for mindfulness practice in, mind, uh, in psychiatric disorders is in the treatment of anxiety. Uh, we also find that mindfulness helps in, help in trying to help people overcome their habitual unhelpful styles of thinking. For example, when people are depressed, uh, they tend to have depressive thoughts, ruminations, as well as very negative uh, th thoughts that really plague them. And so if people develop this mindful practice, they, are, they may be able to see that uh, mindfulness does help separate these uh, depressive styles of thinking from the actual reality. The same goes for anxiety because sometimes uh, people are anxious because they over anticipate things in life. And when people are have a lot of anxious thoughts, they worry, they, are, they become paranoid. Sometimes it's not a true reflection of reality, it's actually their mind just thinking the way it does. And so mindfulness helps people to calm down and hopefully see reality as it truly is rather than a sort of like a formation of our mental thoughts and our own Con, uh, conjecture, meaning to say uh, uh, we actually uh, form these thoughts and reality which is not real because it's just an illusion that is actually passed on to us through our own thoughts and feelings. Also, in when the, uh, people suffer from psychiatric illness, people have a lot of self-blame. People have a lot are very self-critical of themselves. Small little things um, that don't go well in a day. Um, maybe you didn't cook your instant noodles right, you didn't have the, that bite or that texture, bug us like a big time. You know? when, when we're in a better state of mind, small little things like this don't really affect us. But when a person is depressed or very anxious, small little things are amplified in a very, very big way. So when a person has a, uh, is laboring under a mental illness or psychiatric disorder, sometimes they react in a way that's very unhelpful and typically is an exaggeration of the reality. And mindfulness is, a, is really a, a, a way to be able to calm yourself down and see things as it really, really is. So there are many be real benefits to mindfulness practice. And I'd like to uh, say to the audience that I myself uh, have gone on my own journey 
of um, learning about meditation. Uh, I would say that uh, my life is definitely not the smoothest sail sailing or the most perfect or the, you know, no humps in between. And we have a lot of, we hit a lot of humps and bumps in our lives. But it is sometimes through these mindfulness practices that we are able to benefit from being able to, to see reality as it is rather than a conjecture of our imagination of our own uh, thoughts and, and our, thoughts, our thoughts and our own imagination. Some of the mindfulness uh, practices that are beneficial includes the reduction of anxiety, the increase of calmness, uh, and this thing called reduction of emotional reactivity. Sometimes small things can make make a make really a big issue out of small things because we are very reactive but mindfulness itself uh, would actually reduce that re emotional reactivity mindfulness also when when a person meditates and considers the the world around them then they they feel that certain connectedness uh, to their surroundings uh. I mean, like today, I, I'm sure many of you sitting at home today, uh, most of you will experience this cool weather. But where does this cool weather come from? If you really sat down to really consider where that water came from, the temperature, why is it, my goodness, in August it's raining like, like December, you know, it's like what's happening in the world? Uh, really, we're all connected um, in some way. Uh, one to another. I'm just going to pause here to look at all the hand raises and all the questions. Okay, uh, I'm going to uh, answer all these questions on the on the chat later on. Okay, uh, while I'm going to continue the the presentation. When a person is calm and has the time to 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 contemplate, a person really develops an insight into oneself. There's more emotional awareness. And eventually with this emotional awareness and with this insight into the real world rather than the imagined world around them, a person sometimes can develop this sense of empathy. And with this sense of empathy comes this uh, compassion and we, are, we can be kinder to ourselves. And also that we have this ability to be able to care for others as well as care for ourselves. And one of the best things that mindfulness does is that it gives you this ability to focus on, to improve your concentration and your ability to focus on certain topics as well as disengage from those very, very unhelpful thought streams uh, um, arising from anxiety or from a depressed mood. And when someone is calm, they are able to rethink about their current situation instead of jumping back into these really habitual, unhelpful patterns of thinking. So really, um, this, uh, this, this uh, style of you know, uh, mindfulness has this ability uh, to give us this pause uh, between what is bugging us uh, and, and how we react. Uh, and this pause uh, is very important uh, to give us this maybe it could be half a second it could be one second it could be a minute it could be an hour but this pause uh, really allows us uh, to be able to think through the way we choose to react to a situation uh, rather than go through a habitual emotionally driven reaction to a current situation and like to go through the various psychiatric disorders now and where the research shows the benefit of uh, mindfulness practice. So there are some proven benefits of mindfulness practice uh, in depressive disorders. The first of, uh, is, in, uh, is that mindfulness actually reduces the risk of uh, relapses uh, in recurrent depression. Uh, mindfulness also improves symptoms in depression and also benefits, uh, uh, the benefit of mindfulness uh, uh, has been shown to be equivalent to other forms of psychotherapy and antidepressants. So if someone has a 
non-depressive disorder, maybe going through a transition of life, maybe adjusting to new circumstances in life, um, it is useful to use these non-pharmacological intervention rather than just resort to using an antidepressant for especially those mild to moderate illnesses. Of course, in a very, very severe depressive disorder, we should, we, we should use uh, medication. That, as a psychiatrist, I recommend that. But in, in lesser forms of uh, depressive disorders, especially when there's a clear trigger, sometimes uh, learning the skills of calming yourself down may be a good alternative to just giving uh, medications. So why is, why is it that mindfulness works for these uh, forms of mild to moderate depressive disorders? First of all, is that we are actually, we, in mindfulness, we actually focus on the present moment uh, rather than reducing, uh, rather than be caught up with all these uh, depressive thoughts that plague a, a person. But if you can shift your attention from these recurring depressive thoughts to what is present right now, and I'm sure besides this uh, uh, presentation that I'm giving, um, I can see out there, uh, outside my window, you know, the weather is cool this evening. Uh, it's a nice uh, way to end a weekend. Um, this is the present moment. And it's, uh, personally, I enjoyed today very much because uh, of the cool weather. A uh, great thing that I'm, I don't typically uh, experience in Singapore this time of the year, right? Yeah. Uh, mindfulness also reduces the depressive thoughts in general because once a person is calm, they're not stressed. Huh? The, the, the number of depressive uh, thoughts that plague the person actually reduces. And it's well known that you know, when you are in a calm state, your anxiety level is reduced. Huh? Mindfulness is also uh, helpful in anxiety disorders. Huh? Um, because it reduces anxiety due to, due to the meditation, okay? And it's, uh, it has been shown that mindfulness is actually, if a person practices and able to uh, do it regularly, is as good to other psychotherapies. Uh, why, again, why it works again is that it helps a person uh, focus on the present moment. Uh, because the problem with anxiety is that we are always thinking about a possibility in the future that hasn't happened yet. But when we just focus our attention on the present moment uh, and enjoy what is uh, here before us, it is very beneficial to reducing that, the level of anxiety rather than just like go out on a real wild goose chase about what's happening in the future. If you really want to think about what's happening in the future, first of all, you know, there's global warming, there's like flooding, and then you know, that what what's happening between US and China. You know, you can you can imagine every possible outcome. But here and now we have nice cool weather, it's a nice August afternoon, and uh, really it's something that uh, can be really enjoyed. Uh, it also reduces the anxiety and our body re re reactions to anxiety and it, it, it promotes this idea of self-acceptance of what we are and uh, what we can be. Another facet of uh, mindfulness practice is in substance use disorder because um, I, 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 I came from, I, I worked for a few years in the uh, addictions unit in my hospital and we can see that a lot of people habitually just fall back on um, you know, drugs and all that um, as a escape from their reality because they are, when they're anxious uh, they are, or they're stressed, they just, um, the quick solution is to turn to a drug. Um, but what, what, what happens in, if, if a person is able to practice uh, meditation, um, they find that they can calm themselves down and if you practice enough um, and you make good choices about removing yourself from those triggers that that actually um, um, those triggers that actually f make a person uh, go back into substance use, um, then you find that they are able to at least delay um, the time between their 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 last substance use and the next substance use. So what they find is that mindfulness actually reduces stress and stress can trigger substance use and mindfulness and calmness 
can help a person identify their triggers and, and buy him that time, that space uh, to be able to consider alternative ways of coping besides just turning to drugs. There are many ways that a person can calm down besides using substances. I mean, they can go out for a walk, they can go out to the park, they can just distract themselves. But for people who are addicted to substances, they will habitually just switch to, to, to drugs as the, as the first choice. But mindfulness can actually just buy them themselves that time to go to just consider that, oh, I'm stressed now. I think I need to calm down. I think there are perhaps um, three other choices I can make besides drugs. I can go out, I can distract myself. I can just walk around the neighborhood um, and just buy that time. There are other uh, emerging applications of mindfulness in other facets of psychiatric disorders. Uh, the first of all is in PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder. Uh, what they have found in, through research is that uh, mindfulness actually reduces hyperventilation and uh, allows people to focus more on the present as opposed to um, some people with PTSD, sometimes they are caught up in the traumatic uh, memories that they have. And sometimes th these traumatic memories are so real to them, they are so hurtful. But through mindfulness, they are able to pull themselves into the present moment and they end up in the present moment, those threats that uh, used to plague them uh, hopefully are not present at that time. Um, in, the, in the area of eating disorder, uh, mindfulness has been shown to uh, help people with binge eating disorder uh, be aware of what actually triggers them rather than they habitually just fall back into uh, binge eating as a, as a source of pleasure. So they find that if you are able to calm yourself down and you are able to uh, be mindful of things and be able to appreciate the food that they are eating, they actually end up eating less quantity of food. Uh, mindfulness also promotes themselves being less critical of themselves and increases self-acceptance. And in the area of schizophrenia, which is traditionally has been a very uh, biological part of psychiatry, uh, mindfulness has been shown uh, to be able for, to, to help a patient distinguish the psychotic hallucinations, to, build, to, to allow them to see the psychotic symptoms as a symptom rather than reality. So those people uh, who are able to distinguish, to say that, oh, this hallucination is actually a hallucination and not uh, some, someone that is trying to harm me, it helps them be able to accept that they have illness rather than this is just a real situation and their, their, their paranoia is part of the wider world around them. It's actually, something, it's actually part of their illness. So, um, so I have presented all the benefits of mindfulness in psychiatric illness. And then you, you wonder why is it that we're not using more mindfulness in, in our hospitals and in, in our treatment centers? Uh, well, Sometimes a lot of it has to do with patient factors. Uh, that means uh, the per person before us. Uh, um, I, in my practice, um, when I speak to some people about mindfulness, I, I do come across some people, especially from certain religious uh, background, that find it difficult to accept mindfulness as a practice because they come from their own um, perceptions of what meditation is and what they, what's allowed within their religion or not. But the truth is that uh, I, I believe that what Brahm Center is teaching through their programs are all very secular, non-religious, and um, it, it's all about a uh, process of educating people and uh, getting people to, to, to experience it for themselves um, before they can uh, accept what uh, mindfulness practice is. And the, the truth is that actually uh, mindfulness practice has been accepted in many of the mainstream religions, but it may not be called mindfulness. Uh, certainly, of course, in Buddhism, mindful, uh, meditation is uh, quite uh, accepted. But there's also in the Christian world, there's also Christian meditation. And I'm sure in other, uh, in other forms, other religions, um, there, there are equivalents of uh, meditative practices. It's just it may not be called by mindfulness, but it is the same concept. 
also the some people may be very excited about something new so they they they, they love to learn something new but then they 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 find it very uh, uh, difficult to sustain this practice in the long term uh, so that's why uh, people may attend a course but they may not be able to adhere to the what they learn in the course over the long term and the truth is said um, being a uh, someone who does meditation myself, uh, there is a big investment in, the, in time. Uh, maybe not so much in cost in Singapore because a lot of programs can come for, for low cost or it's highly subsidized. But more important is this uh, time. Uh, a lot of times, um, you know, um, to be able to meditate even five to 10 minutes a day uh, would seem like a like eons and forever to a person and because uh, it really takes practice to be able to calm your mind to do meditative practice. Um, of course, uh, sometimes uh, when it comes to mindfulness, um, there are many programs out there. So um, different programs may, may teach broadly the same things, but there may be some variation. So you, you'll find that um, while when it comes to mindfulness meditation, there's no one perfect 10-year series answer to what is the best or most useful meditative practice. So um, the, the fact is that it's not, while not trying to search for the best program, it's more, more important is that are you willing to invest the time in even practicing the basic steps that you have been taught. And um, it has been shown in certain, in, in a small proportion of people that mindfulness practice can worsen symptoms for some individuals. For some people, it may increase anxiety, depression, and suicide ideation, but this is really for the small minority of people. So, um, so I just like to conclude this uh, presentation this evening by saying that um, I myself, as a as a psychiatrist, I do recommend to some of my patients mindfulness practice, especially when they are very anxious uh, people, uh, because uh, from my experience and from my uh, reading, uh, I know that actually mindfulness is really a proven intervention in a certain uh, selected psychiatric disorders, especially anxiety, depressive, and substance use disorder. Um, but uh, we also know that it's a big investment on a person's uh, time and their commitment to, to practice uh, meditation. It really takes a lot of practice and a lot of commitment to be able to move forward on it, but it's, it is definitely useful. Um, we know in psychiatric illness that more than perhaps two-thirds of patients who have psychological distress wouldn't want to come to see a psychiatrist. So it is mindfulness meditative practice uh, is useful for those people who are not ready to come forward to see a mental health professional. So it's great that Brahms Center is having all these programs out there to teach people all these skills because um, rather than taking a medication for psychiatric illness, I think part of the recovery is also learning skills to help yourself and to maintain your wellness after you have recovered from your psychiatric illness. So I, I, I'm, I will conclude this evening by saying that mindfulness is a really uh, great complement to the existing uh, therapies we have in psychiatry and it's something that I think uh, if people are going to put their time and effort into learning I think they'll benefit much more from it. And I'll uh, take any questions you have in the chat group after Dr. Irene has finished her presentation.